So in today's video, it's a video that I've done numerous times and I've gotten parts of it before, but I wanted to do one small, very isolated video on painting tubes. Why you paint your tubes, how you paint your tubes, the color that you paint your tubes, and why that is important. You can take a look, especially as you start to dabble and start to go into acrylics, how many postings I see on Facebook where people go through and they don't paint their tubes and they want to know why the brass tube bleeds through. So we're going to cover that in today's video and with that let's get right to it. Painting the insides of the holes. And now there's two different theories on this one. If I'm doing acrylic I always advocate painting the hole. And the reason that I advocate and the other way to do it is a lot of people will paint the tubes. You want to get reflection. You don't want to see the brass tube. How many pens that I see where on the acrylic, the brass, brass tube gets um, transparent and people will be able to look right through and see the brass tube. You ask the pen turner, they'll go, that's the effect I wanted. It's really not the effect that you want. You don't want to be able to see the brass because it, it really doesn't make for a gorgeous pen and it doesn't make for a pen that differentiates ourselves amongst everybody else. So this is just my theory on why I paint the hole and I don't paint the tube itself. If I paint the hole, all that has to happen now is that light has to just come through this blank, hit the paint, and reflect its way out. If I paint the tube, and I put the tube in here, now light, and the tube is painted, light has to come through, hit the surface of this, go through the glue, hit the brass tube, come back out through the glue, and then reflect out that way. I've got 50% more travel that that light has to do before it reflects itself out and pulls itself out. So that's why I advocate painting the hole. Now we already have this one cut and we've got it drilled. Now we have to make the decision of what kind of color do we want to make this. And I know you're saying, well Mark, that blank is yellow, it's going to be yellow. It's not. We can change the color based on the color that we're painting the hole. And remember, I said we're going to paint the hole, right? So that we can get our light reflectancy and get it to bounce out of it. So let's take a look at what, how, this, how painting the hole different colors can dramatically affect the pen that we're going for. So in this case, this one's yellow. And if I paint the hole white, you can see it actually makes it a little bit lighter color. And that, um, you know, the light, the light is easy to reflect through it. But now what if I painted the whole black? And I want to see what the effect is on painting the whole black. Well, you can see here, that is the same exact pen blank with the whole painted black. And look at the significant difference that I get when I'm doing it and I'm changing the color on it. And it's not limited to light colors. I love the effect that I get on this pen blank too. This one's purple. When I paint it light, I got that really nice easy going purple color on it. You can see it looks a lot like what the blank currently looks like. But if I paint it black, and it might be a little harder to see, that's probably a better angle on it. Now all that stands out is the really light colors of the purple, and the rest of the blank is basically a black. It's a great effect on here. Another thing that you can do, and I love doing, is halfway painting. If I take this tube and I paint the bottom part and the top part black and the insides or the, the white here in the middle, I get like a nice little vignette pattern or a gradient pattern. And it's also, once again, it's a nice effect and it differentiates yourself from what everybody else has. And it's the reason that people will want to come to your booth, pick up your pen, or as I said, when you're in a meeting, people will want to look at your pen and you say, here's what I did to it. Here's what I did different than anybody else is currently doing on it. The other thing that I'll tell you is that when you start to get into this stuff and you're getting into transparency, we're going to take a look at um, style and style of the pens. If you look at any of the pens that I ever do, mine are rarely, rarely straight. I put a little bit of sculpting in mine. And the reason that I put a little bit of sculpting in, and it could be something like a simple taper out at the end, is simply that's what makes it look like it's handmade. I have never had anybody pick up a pen at a show and go, wow, is that straight? What they want to do is they want to take a look at it and when you have that taper in there or you have the figure eight or you've got something in there that they want to touch, their hand wants to gravitate towards that and they want to feel the curve. The nice part about that is the, the curve is what really draws them to it. But when you're especially working with 
blanks that are very transparent, it also affects the light and the bounce in the light. So just be aware of that. As you're doing your sculpting, try to do something that's semi-consistent and that the sculpting will be something that won't show a lot of transparency at one point and then non-transparency. So how do I paint the tubes? It's real simple. I like to use the acrylic paint. I pick it up at Michael's and the acrylic paint, I simply use a Q-tip, I pour the acrylic paint out, I mix the acrylic paint up, and then I use the two Q-tip to make sure that I've got paint all the way around the um, tube, uh, sorry, the hole, and it's ready to go. So with that, you can see why it's important to paint your tubes and all the different effects that we can get when we paint our tubes. I love being able to paint my tube I'm pretty much binary as I said in the video where I either paint them white or black but you can see especially on the yellow or on the purple the dramatic effects that we can get and how we can differentiate ourselves from other people who are making pens you know right across from us or a neighbor or a friend who makes pens you're going to be able to differentiate yourselves with these techniques. So with that that ends this video. If you have any questions or comments please drop me a note in the comment section below. I promise you I take a look at everything that I've got going on. And then, as I always say, if you like the video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel. If you have ideas for any other topics you want me to cover, also drop it in the part below. As always, I thank you for watching the video. Thank you, and have a great day. This video made possible by the fine folks at Exotic Blanks. For all your pen making needs, Exotic Blanks has you covered. Find them at www.exoticblanks.com. And also by Pen Makers International, the educational source for pen making.